No one knows what this building was originally called. It's now known as the Locatorium, but the first recorded use of this name was in the mid 1600s. So that can't have been it, as this building dates back to around 1315. That's over 700 years ago, way before Henry VIII, way before Agincourt, and even before the Black Death. This stone and flint building, around 76 feet long north to south and 18 feet wide east to west, or around 23 by 5 metres in new money, is all that remains of England's richest friary in its heyday. Kings and A-listers were buried in the friary church, which would have stood next door at the time, and every year King Edward II held an elaborate celebration on the anniversary of the death of his male favourite, the infamous Piers Gaveston. Let's go inside and take a look. Kings Langley Friary, now confusingly called Kings Langley Priory, was founded in 1308 by Edward, son of Queen Eleanor of Castile, who had built the royal palace next door. It's hard to imagine now, as there's so little left here, but the top of Langley Hill was the Windsor Castle, or Balmoral, of its day, a royal holiday home with all the trappings and facilities that a royal family at leisure would need. Queen Eleanor was a patron of the Dominican Order of Monks, known as the Black Friars, because they wore black cloaks over their white robes. These friars followed St Dominic, a Spanish priest, who was what we might now call hardcore. He was reputed to have selected the worst accommodation, the meanest clothes, and never allowed himself the luxury of a bed. Nevertheless, he was seriously trending at the time, and Queen Eleanor may have come across his followers on her crusade to the Holy Land. She arranged for her son Edward to have a Dominican tutor whilst he spent his boyhood in Kings Langley, including learning to swim in the River Gave, and so it was an obvious place for him to establish a friary to honour his mother. So in 1308, 30 friars arrived at Kings Langley and were initially housed in a dwelling called Little London, close to where Moat Farm stands today. Building work sponsored by Edward began at the top of Langley Hill and the new friar was probably quite modest at first. It wasn't until 1315 that things really kicked off. This was the year that Edward was finally able to bury his beloved Gaveston at Kings Langley and he seriously flashed the cash. So only seven years after it was founded, Kings Langley was well on the way to being one of the richest friaries in the land. Not bad for monks who didn't even need beds. However, under the Dominican philosophy, the friars couldn't actually own land, so the whole establishment was dependent on the king's ongoing patronage. When Edward died in 1327 and his son Edward III found out that the monarchy was a bit short of cash, he cut the numbers of friars back to 13. Numbers rose again around the time of the Black Death in 1347 when Kings Langley briefly became the seat of government for the whole of England. There may well have been extra work for the friars in the middle of a plague. The Black Friars had everything they needed on the doorstep. They had their own friary, their own church, their own wood. The building next door is still called Friars Wood and their own exclusive path down the hill to the water meadows and fisheries on the River Gade, known then and now as the Drift. The Kings Langley Friary continued to benefit from royal charity, even continuing to thrive after the disastrous fire of 1431, which left the neighbouring palace in ruins. It wasn't until Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries in 1538 that it finally closed, although briefly revived as a nunnery by his eldest daughter Mary, but knocked on the head for good in 1558. It was around this time that it began to be known as the Priory, the name still used today. Many of the buildings fell into ruin. The land was initially rented out to tenant farmers, but eventually sold by a bankrupt King Charles I to pay his debts. By 1678, the then owner, William Holker, demolished most of the remaining buildings except this locatorium, which in time became used as a barn. We're very lucky that this wonderful old building still survives today and it is now Grade 2 listed by Historic England. In 1909 it was acquired by Miss Cross and she engaged the leading arts and crafts architects of the day, Parker and Unwin, to restore and extend the building to house her Priory School, which opened soon after. When the school closed in 1955, the locatorium was then used as a chapel and an old people's home. It is now owned by the former Rudolf Steiner School and I'm here today with their permission. This is a special space. You can feel the history in the walls of a place like this. And I can't help but imagine Queen Eleanor or Edward or the Black Friars in this very room. I'm reminded of the words of the famous Cambridge historian, G. M. Trevelyan, who said, the poetry of history lies in the quasi miraculous fact that once on this earth, once on this familiar spot of ground, walked other men and women as actual as we are today, thinking their own thoughts, swayed by their own passions, but now all gone, 
one generation vanishing into another, gone, as utterly as we ourselves shall shortly be gone like ghosts at cockcrow.